Mad about scuba diving, Andrew and Marit traveled all over the world's warm seas before finding the corner of paradise in which to lay down their things. They scoured Thailand, Malaysia, covered thousands of kilometers between Sumatra and Papua on land and sea. They both learnt Indonesian, did every diving and tourism job there was before discovering their deserted islands in an extraordinarily rich and exceptionally protected virgin environment. Away from the major shipping routes, their paradise is a piece of the world north of Australia to the extreme west of Western New Guinea. The remote islet for which Andrew and Marit have given up their nomadic freedom, the paradise they were determined to reach to build their dream, is here on the island of Batbatim. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Hi. Home again. Great. Welcome to Bat Bitim. <laughs> jump up? Yeah. So, how many? Four. After four years of planning and building, their dream of an eco resort has taken shape on the deserted island. their hotel, both to protect this treasure of nature and to share it with a few clients. On the bay with its turquoise waters, a dozen bungalows have been arranged around the restaurant and the dive centre. From this point onwards, the main things are in place. They've been welcoming guests for the last six months. No more than 20 or so passionate divers at any one time come from all over the world, the United States, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Spain, to be among the first to discover this new paradise. The precious tranquility and the magnificent isolation of Bad Batim present some constraints for the young manager. Are you ready to leave for Sorong? Yes, we are. Are we waiting for any other packages? No, no, we don't need to wait. Let's go. This is the boat we use to bring all our supplies from Sorong, which is about 150 kilometers away. So it goes about once a week. It's pretty tricky because of the distance. Um, so we bring vegetables and if you have any building stuff, like cement for still building, all comes in this boat, as well as drinking water and of course our beer and stuff like that. So yeah, it's quite tricky. I mean, now the season's very calm, but sometimes when it's rough, yeah, the boat's delayed and that makes it difficult for yeah, bringing supplies in and stuff. So. Good. We didn't just want to build a diving resort. We wanted to do something that had a positive impact on the, the area, the environment and the people. So that's, that's the eco side of it, really. So to come here, I mean, obviously, 
you know, we want to come here and enjoy the diving and we want our guests to come here and enjoy the diving, but we also want it to be a very good thing for the local people and the, the environment here. And so that's, that's really the idea behind it. I think there's a number of different facets. Um, the first one was creating a 200 square kilometer no-take zone that was part of the contract. Um, so within this area, there's no fishing, which means obviously we don't fish here either. Um, it means that all the, the fishing boats and the liveaboards and the local people as well don't fish here or take turtle eggs. Um, and that's an area that we patrol from yeah, pretty regularly. All over the world, the shark populations have decreased dramatically in the last two or three decades, mainly due to the rise in demand of shark fin soup. So something we found that's really positive is when we first started building in the bay three years ago, we had no juvenile sharks here. But about a year and a half into the project, we started to see more and more sharks come into the bay. The juvenile sharks tend to favor shallow water areas like our bay. And I think currently we have about 10 juvenile sharks. And some, this is the second uh, batch. And the first group of sharks already have got bigger and some of them have gone out onto the reefs and we're starting to see more and more reef sharks around. So it definitely seems to be uh, slowly coming back. So hopefully. to Sharm El Sheikh, from Durban to Koh Tao, or to the Straits of Lem. In the most beautiful dive sites, this name is on everyone's lips, in everyone's dreams, Raja Umpat. This vast region with its clear waters houses the richest biodiversity for marine flora and fauna Last in the one. world. On three, one, two, three. <laughs>
beautiful. Nice diving. Fantastic cave. Fantastic cave. Wow. I didn't like <laughs> The closest neighbors to Bat Batim live in the few coastal villages of the island of Mizul, half a day away by boat. It is the largest of the Raja Ampat Islands, covering some 2,000 square kilometers. The interior of Mizul is a wild jungle, still unexplored. It was with the Papuan people of the coastal villages who hold customary rights over vast territories and hundreds of islands that the authorizations to establish the resort and the transformation of its immense protected natural park into a sanctuary were negotiated. Out of a desire to give something back and to encourage local development, instead of bringing in tourism professionals from nearby Bali, they prefer to hire and train new employees from within their local community. <laughs> I have no idea how come there's so many children here, but there's always millions of children. <laughs> Hello. Andrew and Marit come back here regularly to look at the possibility of exploring new sites. <laughs> On this occasion, they're meeting the Imam, the local Muslim teacher in the village of Fafalab. These meetings are a good opportunity to talk about the preservation of the environment and the future. Um, perhaps you could tell us what differences there are between fishing in the past and today. It's very different. When I was young, we protected nature. Not only lands, but the sea as well. There were very strict fishing rules and punishments. We only took out the big fish, never the little ones. But all that was lost with the last generation. Today, man lives to earn money. Everyone is in such a hurry. They don't have the time to care for the environment. Yeah. Besides the interest in the dives, the riches of the ecosystem, the projects and the ideals, enthusiasm is constantly revived by the exploration of this unknown land. OK, so this is a place I really wanted to show you. We found this a couple of years ago. Um, we asked around in the local village, and one of the older guys remembered being taken here by his grandmother. Um, and there's these rock art petroglyphs on the walls. Um, really fascinating. As you can see, we're coming closer to them now. There's the red marking on the walls, and apparently they're almost 5,000 years old. The local people don't have any stories about where they originate from. They're not from their tribe, so they're from people that came before. And here are some very, very distinct pictures. Okay, get that, get that to our stop this, innit? So, yeah, not quite sure what they all mean, but there's definitely looks like a dolphin there, and some fish bones, and tuna. And again, the negative of the hands. Made at a time when the water level must have been a dozen meters or so lower, 
How were these cave paintings done in this extraordinary position? Why are all the figures drawn vertically, looking towards the sky? So many cool things. The, the turtle looks, well, looks like a turtle. That's really cool as well. Thank mm -hmm. you.